All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Pigeonhole Motorcycle Podcast. Actually, I'm super happy because this is the 75th episode. I can't freaking believe it, but uh, 75 episodes. So I for our 75th episode, um, I have my new friend on, uh, Paul Drake from Ziggy Moto. How are you today, Paul? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, um, I'm slightly anxious, slightly daunted about being thing here and slightly confused it's i wondered if you've got the right person <laughs> i, you, I think set me up. are you the guy with like a hundred and fifty thousand followers on instagram yeah. that is a bunch of cool shit yeah maybe it's not quite that many and you know a lot of them are, <laughs> are, um, are, are visuals they're, they're conceptual stuff you know some real builds some conceptual stuff do you get a few people kind of coming you say you know they think they're real some of them which i'm not trying to I'm not trying to deceive or anything like that, you know. I try and get my renders to look good, but you know, sure. so that's a byproduct. Right? Sure. I hope you're clear about it. Right. So let's back up. So somebody that yeah. doesn't know anything about your company, so tell us exactly uh, what you do. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of um, in there as a, a way. I'm not a company. I'm not actually a business. Like it's quite unusual, I suppose. And and sort of I I've, I've listened to a few of the podcasts up sort of up to this point. And sort of there's, I can see there's a lot of parallels in some of the stories I've heard from some of the other guys. But I, I kind of, I suppose I've, I'm a designer by training, product designer, industrial designer, a little bit like Hugo. I haven't probably had some of the, the clients he's had. Um, and I've worked, as an industrial designer, I've worked in, in the 3D space, but predominantly in branding since day one. You know, so working on brands like, uh, you know, lots of whiskey bands, brands, booze and beauty predominantly. And I've done that, it's probably getting on to 15, 18, you know, 20 years probably before, yeah. um, you know, for quite some time. And I, I started to get to the point where I almost, I, I started a business probably about 15 years ago. Um, and, um, you know, a couple of years ago, my business partner wanted to retire and we weren't sure what was going to happen with the business at that point. And I started to think, well, you know, maybe this was another direction for me the bike building thing you know it's something I loved sure. um, and so I sort of started it on the side and it was just a passion it's just a love you know and I think and actually the transition of my business partner leaving um, all went really well and my business has, has continued with gathering speed again you know so it's kind of good so it's, it's really just re remained a hobby you know it's uh, and I think that in there that lies there is kind of an interesting it's a huge waste of energy and time and money but you know, <laughs> right. I can't help it. I'm addicted um, um, to it. Well, and so, who knows long term it might so why? Yeah. So why motorcycles? So you you step your own business. Why why bikes? Yeah, bikes. Um, I was thinking about this, and it, 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 it you know I got bikes quite late. I always wanted bikes, but my mum was never going to have any of it. You know, probably a similar story to to loads of kids. So you know, it wasn't until I was probably about 25. 26 i had split up with a with a long-term partner and i um i came home to mom and i said i've done something you won't like now that could have been anything you know, <laughs> right you, you you've got a bike you know it's something i always kind of love the idea of so yeah i did my direct access course in the uk so i went from not riding three-day course and then passed my test went and bought a ducati sort of 600 monster and that was the bike really that tipped me over the edge. I saw one parked up in an alleyway behind where I used to work at the weekends and just like, ah, oh, I loved it. And actually right. the, you know, there's a lot of that in the design work I do, a lot of the influence of that bikes in, in everything I do really. Um, so yeah, and got that. And I remember the guy saying to me, well, there you go. Thanks very much. Here's the keys. And the dealership I bought it from was at the bottom of this really steep ramp onto a really fast road. And I just almost wanted to look at him and say, would you, would you mind getting up there and pointing it in the right direction? Because <laughs> I, I don't want to do this in front of you. Um, you know, so, but I managed to get home all right, you know, and I, yeah, and I loved it. And, and it, I suppose there's something cool. It's just, they're intrinsically cool. And I, I think, you know, I was obsessed as a kid about wanting one. Um, and, you know, and even when you, it's one of those things you notice, you can roll through a street and you'll see, you know, some a guy with his son or daughter. You know, they can be four, three or four, and they're walking along on the pavement. And the kid will stop when he hears it, and he'll turn and he'll watch, and go by, just roll by, sort of captivated. Um, I felt like that when I was a kid, and I, I see kids doing it all the time. Um, that and little dogs going loopy, mental barking around <laughs> in circles because they can't quite get the concept. I think. How does it balance? I don't know. But um, and I remember. 
um, at university where I was studying. Um, one of my mates, mates, my flatmates, mate turned up on a GPZ something or other, and I remember we, we parked it in the in the hallway at the bottom of the staircase, so we could go out for the evening. And just I just remember as I was pushing it, I felt like I was moving an, an aircraft, you know, a fighter plane. <laughs> and at the end of that night, when he got out and he sort of sat on it, turned the key in the ignition, the lights popped out, the the rear of the counter, and everything bounced off the the needle stops, you know. I kind of I almost sort of went cross-eyed with excitement just being that close to it so you know I, I think that's why and as um and from a, a building perspective they're kind of cool they're manageable there you know because i love cars as well but mm -hmm. but um you know and i've got a project a car project going on but that just keeps getting back healed because the bikes i just i love so much you know, right so so okay, so you you decide that you're going to take the motorcycle route to yeah. to do all the designing. When you do that, do you have a client that you're working for? Are you just doing it for fun? Just doing it for myself, doing it for fun. You know, probably I you know, and I don't want to say you know, my dad, I work for big sort of commercial global brands, and you know, lots of briefs, lots of tight timelines, lots of. Um, you know, lots of lots of um, research, consumer research, and Hugo know all about this. And sometimes it can be a little bit demoralizing. You know, you're always working to someone else's brief, and you're designing for for global premises. So, the therapy of of building something to your own brief, starting a project. So I started with like a, I did what everyone did first. Probably it was a BMW R100. Had no knowledge about them at all. It just seemed like a popular bike everyone was building, and I so I bought an old one. And then just started taking it to bits like all kids do, but just, you know. And then I have a propensity to once I start something, I, I want it finished. You know, so I'm I'm kind of impatient in a way. So that's mm -hmm. the the tension in me. I want I want things to be perfect, but I'm really impatient. I was thinking if there's a if there's something that summed me up, it would be a fingerprint in a perfect paint job. Because <laughs> once I've finished I like screwing that. it, I kind of have to go back like five hours later and I, I know I should leave it till the morning and I my something in my brain says just touch it see if it's dry you know so and then no it's oh you know why did I do that and that kind of sums me up in a lot of stuff I do I often you know with the with the excitement and the race to see it finished um I can I can cock stuff up but then you know, that's part of it right no that's cool I like your design part because I think it's even on your website the imaginary bike or i forget how yeah how you... uh, well so the, the imaginary bike company you know because the idea and i started to toy with the idea of taking on commissions and i actually got uh you know because people come and say will you build a bike and i kind of say and I, i've sort of i've sort of done the maths and worked it out and i just don't think you ever make money at it but when it when they when they come to me so i had charles leclerc who i didn't know because i don't follow formula one but someone said to me at work oh, i think drives for Alfa Romeo, I think he may be going to Ferrari. And I thought, well, if I'm going to build a bike for someone, you know, this would be a great, you know, opportunity, you know, so, uh, you know, just exciting. Um, mm -hmm. But but there was a couple of things that sort of, I suppose, I'm not a pro bike builder. You know, I'm not even a bike builder. I'm a bike customizer. I think the stuff that Craig does and Max, those guys are, you know, incredible. So I'm, I'm sort of embarrassed to be being interviewed because I, I'm tinkering. Um, but I started to think, I can see a headline, young F1 hopeful dies on badly made bike. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. You know, and, I, and also, it's, uh, <laughs> it's that thing of when someone else is briefing you, and I think Craig said it in his podcast, when, they, when he said, you know, someone said, would you build that bike again? And actually, the bit I love is building to my own brief and making decisions because because the, the design has led me that way and it makes sense and it, you know, but as soon as you start working with someone and I can feel it and I can see what the builders that do this commercially, it's actually, I want these sort of bars on it. And can I have these headlights and these dials? And actually I wanted to seat really long and drawn out. And suddenly it's a little bit like my day job, <laughs> you know, where it's just, oh, you know, I can't, I can't um, and do it. So, and I think also with that, I was I was dragging my heels. I was slightly worried about it. I had an inferiority complex about doing a great job. And, you know, I, I sort of in the end, I said, look, I, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. This is tough. You need to find someone. I can help you find someone. I did the renders for him um, where we got to as a conceptual thing. I decided ordering parts and that 
those parts are now in another build that I've done, which basically for myself, you know. Um, cool. Yeah, so so that's that's kind of the sort of the, the, the tiptoeing into maybe doing it as a commercial. But I think, you know, if I could see it as it's a lovely retirement plan. Yeah. You know, if I can sit and tinker and build one or two bikes a, a year and sell those, and if it pays for beer and, you know, that's great. Right. So that's the plan, hopefully, at some point. Wow. Well, that's cool. So now, is this what you're doing? Is this what you're doing full time? Or are you working somewhere else right now? Yeah, so I work somewhere else. So I've got, basically, I've got this design agency that's, and that's all consuming. And that's been really, you know, I don't want to sound, it's been really successful. We've done really well. You know, it's yeah. uh, lots of lovely clients from, you know, um, Glenlivet Whiskey to, you know, Carlsberg to Nike to, and we're always working on brands and from a 2D, 3D perspective. And I kind of call it emotional puppeteering, if you like. It's about pulling heartstrings and, and tuning emotions for people. So that's my day job. And that's pretty consuming. There's JDO, there's, there's about 48 of us, 50 of us. We've got a London studio, a Tunbridge Wells studio where the heart was where I live. Um, and, a, and a small studio in New York. Um, but obviously at the moment, we haven't got any studios. We've got lots of people working from home. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and so that's that's the nine to five. And that's not really nine to five. That's probably eight till eight. Wow. And then basically the bike stuff starts from eight till maybe midnight. And then I get myself up at 5 a.m. and do till about eight bikes and bits. And then somewhere in the middle of that, I've got a wife and three kids. <laughs> That I ignore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of awful. I mean, and when I get into a project, they call me the mole, you know, because they, they basically say he's gone. He's gone to us. He's in the he's in the hole. He'll run backwards and forwards there again. Maybe in a good mood because something's going right, or maybe in a really <laughs> bad mood because <laughs> something's gone wrong. You know, and then I'm awful to live with. Yeah, that's a hard that's a hard balance, especially doing both of those things and and doing things you love, but obviously time for the family too. Yeah, tricky. And I do probably, you know, it shouldn't be a counseling session. I probably, I do probably need to focus on them. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, um, I'm quite task focused and I love a project. Mm. I don't sit still. Um, and so even when I do sit down, that's why I'll sit down with the family and I get the laptop out and I sit with that on my lap. And I just, if I'm not doing JDO work, I start building bikes and moving bikes around, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, <laughs> And, and and I can render and I can CAD model and I can do all this stuff in 3D, and I can I can do those quite quick because it's something again I love and I've learned. And at some some point I get to a point where I think, oh god, I love that too much. I need to get it off the page, you know. And that's where I then start going through eBay looking for a donor bike that's as cheap as I can find. Mm -hmm. And then wow. and yeah, that's what starts. And then my wife says, oh my god, you not bought another one. <laughs> <laughs> another one out. Um, and it's so, an addiction. You know, yeah, it really is, and it's a weird addiction. But I think, you know, I don't know if it's a, if it's the design thing. You know, I've always, probably from my perspective, I always drew. You know, I was a drawer at school, um, and and write through, and and I, I drew and drew and drew and drew and drew. But I also the, the frustration of seeing something as a picture, you could draw it, and it was really cool, and you got excited about it. It's like, no, that's almost not enough. I need to realize it. I need to make it, you know, because otherwise it's it's just too frustrating. And I suppose that's the thing with product design and industrial design. It it can't just look good. It has to be good. There's that there's that tension right. in it. So you want it. And the bikes are a great one for that because there's an aesthetic quality, but there's also and you've said it before. It's everything's on show, and you know, and it's and it's it's form and function and all that stuff and aesthetics. But trying to bring it all together in something that's beautiful is really that's great you know i do enjoy i do enjoy it right um, yeah wow okay so tell me this um i i was speaking with our mutual friend obviously uh, mr anthony partridge <clears throat> i figured out what he does this is his other words we were talking about his rotation of words that they're pretty much the words you can't say on tv or anything but yeah so anthony wanted uh he was saying uh, uh something about you were working on the show with him yeah. and he said it was so cool because he would come up with an idea and talk to you about it and you know his stupid little chicken scratches and the way that you put it down on paper he said that just amazing to him yeah i mean it was <clears throat> i think you know i really felt for anthony really on that show i probably i don't want to it was an insight for me i kind of i realized that actually 
he ends up in a negotiation, you know, beg, borrow, steal role. He's basically given a really short time frame. You've got to do five bikes or something. There's, there's not enough money. Go, you know. So I think he sort of spends most of his time on the phone trying to sort of squeeze out favors and sort of get people to help and fabricators and and you know. So again, you know, I like to keep weirdly. I'm, I kind of like to keep my head down, but Instagram is. They almost don't think it's me, so it's fine. It's, it's, it's sure. this thing. But he found me through that and, and sort of, you know, in his way, he's hard to, well, it's hard to get a word in first, and then he's very convincing, you know. So, <laughs> and before I knew it, I was turning around going, I think I'm going to be helping him on a show, and he's going to... So, yeah, so we kind of, he'd sort of come up with the concepts. They were constantly shifting, so he'd say, like, I'm going to get the Ducati or I'm going to get a Harley. And I think I drew up about five or six bikes, and then it turned out, you know, Harley wouldn't give him the bike, or so get scratch all that. We go, I've got another bike, and I'm going to be doing this. Um, and so, in a way, you're going to sort of get to a point. And then there'd be that day filming where I'd go up to Manchester, be with the guys in Golden Works, which was cool, great experience. I, you know, I hate drawing in front of people, and it is really hard because it was a there's a post rationalizing of we've done all the sort of it's going to look roughly like this sort of a month or two ago right and then trying to be that genuine sort of okay a bit like this you know a bit like this how about you know and it, it was it's tough like oh, you know, so you're talking about when they're they were filming you on the show yeah exactly yeah. so you're trying to recreate this illusion that it's happening there and we're spitballing ideas and stuff and it's you know, it's certainly not natural. But luckily, my part is about, I don't know, two and a half seconds. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not too bad. I get away with it. That's funny. So now, where where are you at? Where's where's your home and studio? Um, well, it's um, south of London, sort of, so quite a bit, you know, about an hour of, with sort of Tunbridge Wells, um, East Sussex, and just below there. So countryside, which is kind of, you know, I mean, it gets rural pretty quick in the south of England. Um, it's got a bit of space around me so I can start an angle grinder at 7 a.m. and I'm only upsetting my family. You know, so right. <laughs> always a, always a joy. Can, right, exactly. I'm sure they love that. <laughs> yeah, I was doing it this morning. And I, That's I said, great. Try and keep it quiet, but it's, it's hard to start an angle grinder quietly. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's true. And speaking of, of noises, okay. So I know somebody's going to ask me this when they when they listen to this podcast back. Did I hear a horse before? Yeah, yeah, you okay. might have done. That's, um, if you can hear it, yeah, that's my, my kids. My You know, so I've got two girls and a okay. boy um, between nine and, and um, 14. So, yeah, my girls are tipping into teenage. But the girls have had ponies and, and now horses, and my wife told me that it keeps them away from boys. And um, That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So open boys keeps them occupied. They have to graft, you know. They have to get out there and they muck out. So we walk down in the mornings in the in the fog and and they go their way. I go my way into the workshop. And so yeah, no, it's good. But you know, you can't get me on one. I, they no? terrify me. Yeah, no, they terrify me. My <laughs> mum always said never go around the back of one. And I was I was mowing one day and my wife brought in like some she'd borrowed. All the they borrowed ponies. Loads of people buy ponies and then you know, don't want them and lend them to people. So we kind of always got, but she brought some polo cross pony in called Midnight. You know, the name should have suggested everything. And she said, he's amazing. He's, he's respond. He's so cool. She said, you should have a go. And my kids were like, yeah, go on daddy, go on daddy. So I hopped on the back of him and I've watched cow cowboy films. I've, I like, you know, I would like to have been a cowboy. And so sure. I, I thought I can do this. And I took it across, not got a, a lot of space, but I took him across the field, turned him around, gave him a squeeze, and oh my god, I had no idea. You know, I've got, I've got, uh, you know, I've, I've my track bike, I've, you know, two hundred brake horsepower Panigale, but it maybe it's because the the horse took off almost without me doing it, but it was just terrifying. I didn't know they could accelerate like that. They got and one I, horsepower. That's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I couldn't. I, I didn't, I had the reins were too long, so I couldn't stop it. My arms were way back behind my ears and he, he wasn't going to stop. He knew he had an idiot on his back and I didn't know which side to get off. It was like jumping off the back of a thrasher, you know, it's just, so that's it. I'm, I'm done, you know, and actually I, I said to my kids, you know, I think per rider, per horse, they're more dangerous than motorbikes. I think they kill and injure more people than bikes. Oh. Um, and my wife's had punctured lung and resulted in pneumonia from, from a horse kick. Holy. 
cow. You know, so that's but terrible. that's a kid. It happens, doesn't it? You know, but not to me because I'm always the other side of the fence. <laughs> that's one way to stay away. That's the yeah. reason I I've never crashed a motorcycle. <laughs> which is yeah. which is which is very good. I'm uh, I'm gonna stay on that angle. Yeah, you uh, wait. When you're unloading Craig's bike later, just take uh, it off you. It can still get you, even when you're not on it. Right, run over my foot or <laughs> fall on me or something. Yes, yeah, I, I don't even know that much about anything. I'll, I'll be happy to help. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to Partridge really quick because he had oh. he, he said one thing too that he um he was he said make sure to ask Paul about. Something, oh, racing him at the, as you call it, the Mally Mile? Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay, the Mally Mile, yeah, you bring that up. Right. You know, the, the production crew basically whispered in my ear and said, if if I could fall over in the first three inches and fall off the bike, make Anthony look really good, you know, uh, but <laughs> so, <laughs> I, wish that, I wish that were true. It wasn't, uh... <laughs> it wasn't the case. We kind of, I think he had built one of the bikes we'd sketched out. Um, he had made, subsequently made, and then he turned up to the Miley Mile. It was my first time at the Miley Mile, um, and I loved it. But it was a, it was a monsoon. It was a downpour. It was torrential, mm. and um, uh, for like two or three days in the middle of July in England, and and there was loads of different events. But you know, one of them's a hill climb, and so the production crew were there and said, "It's perfect. You're here. Anthony's here. Let's do a head to head." They sort of whacked on the GoPros, you know gaffer taped everything on and then we joined a queue and there was there was you know we got two we got two laps you know two attempts um and i was on a bike i'd basically built a bike really quick for an event called dirt quake which was like grass track and it was it's almost a grass track race for inappropriate bikes so i'd built i'd found a beaten up old 750 super sport ducati on the south coast lived on the by the sea and was just corroded to to buggery and i just hacked it about to make it into something a bit mad maxi something that i wouldn't mind dropping something that had a bit of personality and character and i thought well i'll take this to the mile you know no mm-hmm. steering lock on it weighs a ton um my body weight's way back uh, and just you know it was <laughs> all the wrong bike for all the wrong event you know so <laughs> so i'm blaming that as why it was i was I, I sure myself so much <laughs> it's um, yeah. that sounds good how is, that event sounds like it's really cool i've seen some videos the hill climb the hill climb thing looks crazy yeah. i mean it's brilliant and last you know we did that last year and i think you know they're still trying to run it the event this year with all the lockdown and, and banning of gatherings but because it's outdoors they're kind of hopeful so i've signed up for it but it's yeah it's amazing it's kind of you know, Goodwood Speed meets Burning Man. You know, it's like a festival. It's a really nice feeling to it. Um, and it's sort of uncompetitive competition. And it's there's kind of a smile, everyone's grinning. Um, yeah, it was really lovely. So, and I mean, you know, hats off to the, the, the Mali boys for, for pulling it off. And then there's Kennington Hall, the venue's incredible. Um, you feel like you're wrecking someone's, some estate's lawn, you know, it just feels, really? Yeah, yeah, which is, you know, kind of special. By the time everyone's left, the place is churned up, you know, especially last year, it was just a mud bath. Oh, uh, yeah, for a monsoon, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah. That's great. So what other things out there, I know that um, I've talked to Anthony and a couple people else from around there. What other events do you go to around there? Have you Do you bring bikes to? Yeah. Do you, where do you go yeah. to? Yeah, well, the thing is, I kind of, because I kind of, as I say, this is, I like to live in my little bubble. I'm doing my, I do my stuff. I'm doing my, my, my designs. And I suppose the design bit, I, the Ziggy Moto thing, Ziggy was my dog. He was, yeah. you know, it was my dog's now. Unfortunately, he died last year, but he was, I loved him. He was great. And so I was on holiday, and sometimes on holiday, I kind of find myself frustrated because I can't do anything. I have taken fiberglass and resin and stuff in a suitcase so I could carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Which That's is awful. Great. I know, so I've got on holiday. My wife's like, what's You have smell? a problem. <laughs> What's that smell? And I start pulling stuff out. So I just got finished this. So, so I, I sat there and I just started, you know, and I was rendering bikes and I just started posting them on Instagram. And it actually reminded me, I suppose, the the, the concept visual stuff I do. When I was a when I was a kid, I used to read Street Machine, which was a custom car magazine. And in this magazine, every week there was a guy I've written his name down because I had to look it up called Steve Kirk. And he did two-page sense spread of concept sketches for different hot rods. He'd take 
know, Ford Escorts or Ford Pops or, you know, and he just, and I loved them. As a, I obsessed about them, and I would draw all day those on my on my math book and English book when I should have been paying attention. That you know, it, it littered sure. with sketches of cars, and and so the the CAD concept work was was almost that. And if it's inspiring people to do stuff, I get a lot of people talk to me about that. So anyway, I've kind of I've digressed, but so in a way, I was in this bubble doing my thing, enjoying it, and just kicking out images on and the bits of builds on Instagram. And I never I'd never been to a bike show. I'd never really seen. I'd never, you know. So I went to the bike shed show the first year just to just have a look, <laughs> you know. Right. And at this point, I had quite a few followers, and I felt a bit of a fraud because I'm not. I was just me in my head and my my world. So, and I went around. And I loved it. I loved what Dutch and Vicky have created. That it was incredible. Um, the tobacco dock, I think it's tobacco dock, and it. That was so cool. But, you know, it's amazing, and it's just so much to take in. Um, and there is, there's, there's bikes there that are incredibly accomplished, engineering, mechanically, and there are other bikes that are just simple and, and elegant and beautiful, and sort of the less is more idea. So yeah. I did that, and I, and I also went, I did, before I put a bike into that show, I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna look stupid, you know, my, that my stuff was okay, or, you know, good enough. I didn't want to just roll in and push a bike in and then just think, oh my God, you know, I'm so Oops. out of my head. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> And so I signed up for it the following year, and they took three bikes that year. Wow. Um, I'd done a CR250, which was an old bike I used to have that just was, you know, rotting under a blanket, um, which I turned into like a, a con sort of a, there's, there's a really sort of a nice balance of sort of a retrospective contemporary Mad Max, sort of, I always think it's Mad Max meets Goodwood Revival style to it. Um, mm -hmm really sort of short and grunty. I did an XB750, which was a really, I, bit, I, I bought a bike and a guy had, had taken it to bits. He'd got all the bits. He'd got another rare tank that's really hard to find. And he basically said, look, I'm just gonna sell, you can have both the bikes. If one's got a registration document, the other hasn't. Turned out they both did. So I've got, you know, two bikes, the price of one. And that bike, so I, that bike was just a bundle of bits. And so, but that, I finished that and they took that bike. And then I also, I built uh, my old track bike that I, I where well, it had taken itself apart and I crashed it at Brands Hatch. So <laughs> that I, I rebuilt that into like a modern interpreter, it's like a sort of a cafe fighter, really. It's sort of vintage feel, but quite aggressive looking. And that Ducati took that on their own stand. They they had a space. This and and they said, "We'll have that one. Can we take?" Can, would you mind if it goes on? You know, which is cool. So my first show. Yeah, that's really cool. In, um, three bikes in, and also for them, they, you know, I'm a bit of an oddity because I wanted to be the, the. You call it what do they call it? You know, the, the shed builder. Because I'm not pro. I'm not commercial. I started trying to sell t-shirts just because I thought it could pay for parts. <laughs> you know, because there's only so sure. much I can lie to my wife about. And if I started to say, well, I've got a revenue stream, so you know, this is paying for itself. Of course. Um, <laughs> um, so, but I said to them, look, I'm not a commercial builder, I'm not, but you know, the, I've got, I, I'd created a website because I could, because I was, I was done on holiday, um, and because I was thinking maybe I'd do this as a job, um, mm -hmm. and because of the Instagram following, because I've been selling t-shirts, they didn't know where to position me. I'm not commercial, I'm also, because of the sort of this illusional bubble I've created, right. I'm not really amateur, I'm not a, I'm not a shed builder. So. But so it was cool. So, and I was looking forward to this year. So every bike I'm building is getting a little bit more, there's a little bit more of a technical challenge in it. And I'm pushing myself to do new stuff. Um, sure. And then of course, COVID comes along and rains on it. I know that's not the worst thing that's happened with COVID. <laughs> I don't wanna, wanna, you know, I know it's been awful for everyone, but you know, the, that's yeah. a real shame this year that a lot of the events and you know, for the hospitality business, it's been a real, it's a real, Pain. Yeah, Pain. yeah, no, yeah, and it just stops all the gatherings, and that's what I'd love, you know, about all those is the community and bringing people together and getting, you know, the camaraderie and just chatting, and yeah, that stuff's absolutely. gone. And I was starting to, and I think you said it as well on one of your other podcasts. There's something, there is something quite cool about Instagram. There's there's a lot of bad stuff about it, you know, yeah. you know, awful, and I've my kids and stuff on it, and and I have to. It, it's all for how you post stuff and just have to be mindful it's 
but it but there's there is a community and actually i'm what i'm amazed about of this is probably four or five years since i started doing coaching stuff to see and I've, i've could count on one hand negative comments if that That's never fantastic yeah incredible but i, I think a bit of that is because it's bikes and i think the biking communities is maybe more accepted i don't know but you know and even and when it, and, and if I've, i always try and you know be just gentle in response but even those negative ones if i justify maybe what they'll come back and go yeah yeah no totally man i completely get it that's yeah cool and i and i but i know so i feel like i know people yeah <laughs> I've never met right them. and i know that it's and i don't it's like i am mr partridge or i am anthony partridge or i basically know that little round circle picture i know and doesn't he have a canadian flag or something in there too in his, in his yeah, name. Maybe, yeah or the flying dutchman or max or luke yeah. and i you know thornton and, and weirdly i don't really know the name sometimes i sort of say phonetically when you sort of say what you i, I basically sort of and in my head because you never say it out loud and then you're and because i was sort of embarrassed to go to the bike shed people say so oh, hi how are you you know E Ziggy Moto, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just Paul. I'm Paul. I'm not the Ziggy Moto. It's sort of, it's and guy. There's some people, you know, want to can I have a photo with you, and it's just, oh, you know, my skin's crawling. It's just, I feel, it's, it's all, you know, it's it's great, and everyone's lovely, but I, but, you know, it's sort of embarrassing. So we did. So that on the other events, so the bike shed show was brilliant. It was a really cool after party thing we did as well there was a flat track moment on these little sunday bikes you know that was incredible in shoreditch in the middle of london um really housing estates all around and they sort of ushered us in and everyone they sort of gave you these forms to sign and then they were just having on around hay bales into the darkness it was incredible so that was brilliant That's great uh, anthony got up on the bike i wasn't gonna do it i thought this never again my, my, <laughs> my heart rate was running i was like i'm gonna do it i don't want to do it Nothing. <laughs> break a leg um and then the bike they so the bike shed also did the thing called the cafe racer cup which okay. um i think they've run that they've done it two years and that was that was brilliant that's another that's them almost amping up so molly mile is kind of country gen meets scrambling community the cafe racer cup was down at lyndon hill which is a british track on the south southeast coast and they basically took that whole place over as a venue and it was well this year the marley mile guys turned up and on the hillside did it the grass stuff then around the track so we've got you know inappropriate bikes we had um you know harleys and and sort of easy rider bikes sort of doing on track you know racing and then the cafe racer guys racing and you know and it was it it was a little bit chaotic but brilliant you know i was in the fast group on the cafe racer bikes and there was a couple of guys on enfields tricked up enfields that came off you know and because the circuit time was short they just left the bikes in there so you'd be hanging off coming around a right hander and there's an enfield in the middle of the track they went yellow flagging it they're just like everyone keep going you've got two more laps and you're off <laughs> um you know it was, it was brilliant so having not done any events i think i did bike shed um show the Cafe Racer Cup, I did Gentleman's Ride. Um, yeah. I did, yeah, did a load of, um, I, I decided I was gonna do that and I wanted to raise as much as I could. And then, so I started sketching bikes for 50, 50 quid a pop. And I got to about 11 grand. I think I was the, I was- Wow. Um, I was one of the second or third in the, in the UK, in the top 10 globally for fundraising. Good <laughs> man. That. Yeah, and I kind of, I loved doing it, but it was, it was a lot of sketching. I bet. So I squeezed I bet, that in. I so I did the gentleman's ride, then the the Marley Mile. I basically back to backed events that year. So from nothing to everything, and it virtually rained at every single one. It was a is downpour. It, is it usually like that? No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> so the Cafe Racer Cup. This I wasn't going to do that because you know, if it's raining, tracks just you know it doesn't go well together. Wet weather and and hanging off bikes. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, so it rained and rained and rained. I just thought, well, I'm the jinx. I'm not. I shouldn't sign up again, and they'll have sunshine. You know. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So this year, I would have done all of them again, and I'm still hopeful the Mali Mile will come off. And the Mali guys have also arranged on the on the East Coast. I think they're doing a beach sort of drag race. 
you know fine. so i've got and i think i'm just finishing off the xr uh, the cr 500 which is kind of a, a monster of a bike really power wise and because i'm i'm not good enough to ride it but the straight line is probably perfect for it right <laughs> you know? that's well, great though okay so do you have a I, I hear you talk about all these bikes do you have a favorite one that you like are you like an italian motorcycle guy or are you yeah what's, probably what's your favorite i mean i'm ducati's i've kind of that the ducati monster um it was my first bike i loved it and then i kind of stuck with v-twins so I'd, I'd almost say i'm a v-twin guy um okay. but i love the ducatis um have my 749 track bike uh, which which I crashed and then I, I put sort of I couldn't best look at it so I, I put that under a blanket and upgraded to something with more power because of course that's what you do after you crash but I need more power um, so I got the, uh, the so I got the Panigale and that's basically I love that that's great now I'm getting to, to grips with it um, so yeah I'm probably the V twin I just love the grunt the low end torque V twins having the sound you know anything from a Harley to to Dukes to Guzzies to even that flat twin of the of the boxer engine, the BMW, you know, right. which when I built that, having never ridden one, and before I, you know, balanced the carbs and all the other bits and pieces, the whole thing shakes when it's a low idle, because you've got these pistons firing out of both sides, and it's, it, you know, it's just, yeah, 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 and, and it's lovely. It's like a tractor. It's got such personality. I once was given a Phaser as a courtesy bike, a Yamaha Phaser. I'm sure it's an incredible bike, but just. Oh, you know this, and they're high revving, and it was smooth, and I didn't feel like I'd been shaken to bits when I got off it. And where's the fun in that? You know, I, right. wanted, I wanted to carry on an experience and a character. You kind of want personality, I think. So, which is true. Yeah. Wow. That's okay. So here's another question. I have this. This stuff amazes me. So I, I look at. Um, I know a lot of guys that listen to the show too are you know building in the garage. You know, I, I feel fortunate that I have like. I think I'm doing great because I have like 2,000, you know, Instagram followers. I look at yours. You're like in the hundreds, 100,000, whatever, wh wherever it is. So what – was this like a, a gradual thing? To, can you remember like what did you do? What did you post to, when you knew everything just exploded? It did, it's kind of ramped. And as I said, I was just – I was posting bits of stuff. And I suppose because I was – I wasn't – it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I couldn't generate that kind of Instagram following for my business, for my actual business, my design business. Mm -hmm. Because that's a, a more competitive market. There's less differentiation. I, and, but, but I suppose maybe I've t I've in, in, a, in what's a smaller niche. And I wasn't designing or creating stuff or building stuff or creating renders for Instagram. I was creating and building stuff for me, which I would just churn out. And I love doing it. And the almost posting it to Instagram was like a byproduct, I think, you know, and, and I could just chuck them into Instagram. And then the th the weird thing is, some of the, all the CAD models I do, I kind of finish. I, I I almost don't. I overwrite the file. I don't even keep it because I can do them quite quick. I kind of get excited by it, change the color, change the frame, move the tank, change it around, and so, and then I would chuck a few sketches. I'd sketch stuff in a meeting because you know. I think sometimes creative mind works better when it's doodling. I tell everyone I am paying attention. I know it looks like I'm not, and it, it helps me <laughs> process thoughts. But then I, you know, I'd sling those on Instagram. So there was there was lots of different stuff, and it has slowly crept up. But the, you know, there were there are almost. It's weird. It's like consumer research, isn't it? There have been builds and things that resonate more than other stuff, mm -hmm. and then you can. It, there's sort of key bikes and renders that have gone brrr, and that's there's just sort of grown and it, it's it's insane it's bonkers really I, you know i don't but again there was a moment where i thought hey hang on this is great isn't it instagram you're supposed to people i'll be a millionaire now from this <laughs> you know, i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> right. get someone's gonna pay me money for for doing something but nah you know, so if anyone's got within the bike and i suppose that's typically the word isn't it if anyone's got aspirations of building an instagram and someone will probably tell me i'm wrong and they're making loads of money out of it. <laughs> but i think if i was maybe if i wore bikinis or if i was doing you know fitness or dietary stuff but motorbikes and in the whole like people mostly ride motorbikes because they haven't got any money. <laughs> you know, so there's not many advertisers who are chasing those guys. True, true. So. And and you know you make a good point because I always think of Instagram followers as um, still it's a very niche um, crowd. 
But yeah. I, I always think of them like walking by your bike and they kind of give you like a thumbs up, like, oh, that's cool. So then yeah. you have your father. But uh, but 100,000 of those should generate something over time, we would think, yeah, right? Think, I know, but at the same time, it's not, as I said, I kind of, I was doing it, it was a byproduct of, of stuff I was making, even still now, you know, I've got, at the moment, I've got something on a 3D printer. I've got these these really amazing little lights and I'm so I've got so after this I'm going to run out and see what my my 3D printers come up with. It's like my awesome. my quiet little man that works for, for nothing in a corner, <laughs> and he works when I go to bed. I was slightly yeah. worried it's going to sell light to the house, but he. he sort of, <laughs> and in the morning it's like, what have you done? Okay, cool. And then so after this I'll get, grab that, I'll run down, I'll put it on the bike, and I'll take a picture and I'll post it on Instagram. And it, but the the person that doesn't it's inconsequential in a way but i think people are obviously like seeing the bits in the process sure. i don't i usually hide all the failures because I've, I've got an ego i want to look better <laughs> i want to look better than i am <laughs> well <laughs> nobody nobody makes mistakes and throws stuff away i can guarantee you that no yeah, uh, no absolutely <laughs> and again i've done so many of those things there are undoings where you and i think i've said it on instagram you're halfway through a build and you've got bits and pieces that are finished, but, and you kind of want to see what it looks like before it's finished. And so you prop everything up, you know. I lean the bike and I'll, you know, there's basically a bit of eight mil studding through the wheel that's holding it in, so the wheel's sort of wobbling over. But I'll mm -hmm. balance it against the shutters, even though the shutters slightly move, and then I'll balance the tank that's been painted on it, you know, freshly painted, looks beautiful, and all the bits, and I'll, I'll sort of, it'll slightly look like it's gonna fall, and I think, that's okay, and I'll step back, and I go to get the camera, and that's when it goes, and everything goes. <laughs> and you just think, patience, Paul, photograph it. And this will probably resonate with anyone else that's building bikes like me, amateurish builders like me, and maybe some of the pro guys. Because you do that, sometimes I'll, I'll put stuff on just to see what it looks like, and put a couple of bolts in, finger tight, walk away, go to bed, go to work, come back, work on something else. And then it's only when I'm doing the first test ride at 70, 80 mile an hour thinking, which bits didn't I go back to? <laughs> which bits look like I put them on, but I haven't. You know, they, they're, they're kind of, they're on by, by luck and a fair wind. And that's another reason why I shouldn't be selling bikes to anyone just yet until I really know <laughs> it's the safe. And I think Craig did it as well. He's, he, he's fine building bikes for him. My safety, I'm, I'm, I don't care. I, you know, I, I want it to be safe, but safety sure. is way down the list. I want it to look great. I want my cables to be hidden. I want it to be super clean. Um, and safety, yeah, yeah, is safe enough. But as soon as you hand the keys over to someone, it has to be, it has to be perfect, perfect, doesn't it? You don't want things yeah. failing. Yeah, no, I can't even imagine the responsibility that goes with that. Yeah. It's exactly. crazy. It's I like mean, being it's... a doctor or something like that. You know, yeah. All right, well, hope this works. <laughs> we'll stitch yeah. you up. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. No, exactly. So there's, it's, um, and that's why I don't know how the commercial guys deal with it. There's some, I spoke to a guy who I really respect. I think his name's Jody. And he's, if he, you may have heard of him, Thornton, I think it's Thornton 100 Motorcycles. Or so. He's a young guy and he's, he's super talented. And just, when I spoke to him, he's just a million miles at his, his thought, you know, and, and he talks about his build and he gets and he's, he's from an engineering background as well i think mechanical mm -hmm. engineering background so he's getting he's getting the steel he buys or the titanium tubing he buys he's got that certified so he knows the quality and the gauge his welds are coded uh, or a sort so if anything fails he's got it all documented and he says whatever's failed it won't be my responsibility in this in the chain i've covered you know, and um, which that's the sort of diligence I think you really need to do job. Maybe. Right. That's a, yeah, that, that would have to be a documenting nightmare too. I know, but I think he's just, he's, he works on that level. Right. He's impressive. And he, he's, a, I, I admire people who can graft and who work and he's someone who seems like he's given up everything life outside. This is it. He does it 24 seven. Right. And that's, just, I'm uh, sure he'll be successful because of that. Yeah, I don't know how you guys can actually have families that the amount of uh, hours that get put into some of this stuff is just, it's just amazing. Yeah, I'm not so sure. I, I have one left. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll wrap up here soon and make sure you can check and see if they're still there. 
<laughs> they took yeah. off with the horses and they're gone. They're leaving you there. They're gone. They're skidding. <laughs> um, well, yeah. okay. So here's I have one more question before uh, before I'm going to ask you for some nominations from you too. Cool. Um, okay. So I look. I, I I was just on Instagram before. It's it's funny how you say like when you meet people and the you're you're Ziggy Moto. You're not Paul. You're, yeah. You're not Paul Drake. You're Ziggy Moto. But when I look on here and I, I was looking through. Until Anthony had sent me a message, I was looking to find your name. Yeah, and I, and I couldn't. No, I mean I can't. But you know, I like the anonymity. I was right. sort of embarrassed. I was embarrassed about it. And you said so the the bike shed thing of just coming out and it's it's like you know, hi. It was all I you know I didn't want to do it. I'm, and I think a lot of you know I'm a, I'm a shy show off, which is a really weird combination. I don't really want to, uh, you know, and I'm quite introverted. But mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, I kind of hid it. But, you know, and again, why? Why it, it wasn't in theory. Didn't want it to be about me. It's about sure. doing stuff and making stuff, and you know, and that's the passion. That's what I love doing. From from the sketch through to making it real and sitting on it, turning it on, starting it, and, and riding away. It's mm -hmm. um, that's the the cool stuff. And every now and again, I'll post something that's maybe a bit of me. And I, you'll, you'll, some people may see it flash up, and then it will get pulled because I have this moment as a no, don't. This is not what be done. You know, pull that. Um, right. So I try to hide a little bit. So, yeah, well, our, that that would be a question because when we get done, I'm going to ask you to send me a couple photos to represent this podcast. Are we? Gonna yeah, show, I know. Gonna be... Are we going to show the real Paul Drake, or is it going to be a yeah. motorcycle? Yeah, I'll put a helmet on. <laughs> There you go too. That's another way to do it. See? Yeah, maybe. What was his name? Um, they said about Daft Punk. That 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 group. That's right. They said they couldn't still be making pop music if they shown their faces because no one wants to. <laughs> Fifty-year-old guys aren't relevant anymore. But right. in the moments, they're still credible. <laughs> yeah, they're still as credible today as they were when they started. Yeah, and still as good too. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. All right. So because we're here. Um, and the other podcast, uh, my favorite thing is to, I wanted to start the show with the people I knew and then I wanted to see where it went to let yeah, you guys cool. kind of drive it. So um, I want three people that you admire or that you'd like to hear, you'd like to hear their story that, you know, as moonshot, you know, anybody in the world or any average Joe off the street. Yeah, no, well, I think I'd like uh, that guy I just mentioned, I think Jody Thornton, motorcycles. I think he'd be fascinating. Um, he's where's he at? He's, I don't, do you know, I don't know where he's based. It's again, I don't know. He, he exists on Instagram and I met him at the bike shed. Um, okay. So I feel like I know him really well and we chat now and again about stuff and I ask questions. Um, the other guy is, um, and again, I have to, I call him, well, I think his name's Luke. Okay. L-U-U-C, Luke Muse Creations. I don't know if anyone's mentioned him to you before. No. Uh, he's just a super nice Dutch kid. Um, let's call him a kid. He's probably unknown, 25. But yeah, I met him at the Bike Shed show. He just built an XR500. I'd built one as well. So um, we, we were chatting. Um, and I've just watched him again. Super talented, super passionate, creative, does all his own builds, does his own visualizing. He's kind of, and I love that, the one-stop shop where they, they seem to have right. all the bits um, and and technically pretty accomplished. He's just done a, an Indian build for Indian. He won a competition. Oh, and really? The, bike is, the bike's incredible. You know, he pretty much, you know, uh, it, that's a proper bike build. So all of the rear suspension, this sort of telelever sort of setup, all right. custom CNC machine, gorgeous. You know, really lovely bike and a really lovely bloke. So he'd be fascinating that's um, awesome to talk to luke's I, i'm i'm sorry let's repeat that again luke is it luke's new luke l-u-u-c underscore m-u-i-s underscore creations there we are see i'd never be able to find these people no Sometimes i mean that's you... the weird thing and that's what's weird about i you know i i can stumble across stuff that you think i've never seen this before how have i not Where's the algorithm wrong? Why isn't the algorithm bringing this to me? Sure. You know, it's bringing me other stuff I don't want. It should be this. Um, yes. And then the last one, which is, you know, which I just think are fascinating, uh, and you may have heard of them before. There's a company called Image Design Customs. And, no. 
Um, See, this is why this is great. Image yeah. design customs. And he is um, so Tom is the, the one of the founder owners. Tom and Steve, they're the two guys. Okay. You know, he's ex motocross rider and stuff like that. But he's a he's an artist. He's a their paintwork is. I'm 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 obviously a slightly obsessive compulsive OCD <laughs> um, perfectionist. And when I send my, I'd love to do the painting. I used to be a model maker for for a bit of time um, before I started my design career. And I'd like to do the painting. I just haven't got the setup. But but when I give the painting out to people. I slightly obsess about it, you know, and, and these are the only guys I've ever worked with where it comes back and I'm always stunned. It is incredible. The, you know, the pinstriping, the tolerances, the symmetry. Um, they've got another girl there called Mandy who does all of her hand stuff. She's incredible. But it'd be interesting to get his take. So he does everything from, they've got a big ongoing commercial stuff, like they do all the Red Bull helmets, for the, the, all the competitive races and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they do loads of the, basically all the custom bike guys go there, and um, and they're either given a tight brief or a loose brief. But I think how they approach paint, how they how they you know how they come up with their, some of their schemes when they've got the freedom, I think that'd be a fascinating one to cool. to listen to. Like, and I love stuff like that because I think so, a couple of people were under the impression they're like we're only doing custom motorcycle builders. No, yeah. we're did or only cafe guy. Like I love. Yeah. I love journalists, I love painters, I love photographers, you know, just, you know, artists, every, everybody. Yeah. It just makes yeah, the community yeah. a whole thing. Absolutely. And, you know, it's like everything. When I take all the, the, the body panels off any bike, I can take the XV750 and the CX500 and you take the body panels off them and you know, there's a lot of black metal and engine. And actually, it's not until that stuff goes on top. That's the cherry on the pie. That's suddenly it comes alive and a bad paint job or it's... It's, it's the most important job for me and in the, in the, it's the most exciting bit and so I think bike builders you know should be, you know we're fascinated and we'd love to hear a bit more about thing about the process of how the paint's yeah. done you know what's important I, I find a lot of the things that you say today very interesting Paul because um, you know I always think you have guys that are like obsessed about you know what you love to do um, yeah. but putting that in with the obsession with the hard work with never being satisfied to make sure everything's perfect to, to put the stuff out from your drawings to you know 3d modeling it takes a lot to put all those things together yeah yeah and it's kind of, it's kind of, and actually it is a it's usually a roller coaster what's that i love that phrase um the ability to leap from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm you know and actually if you because it is it loads of cock-ups and and you're usually disappointed everything you do but eventually things get there and nothing i've done is perfect but i'm getting i'm getting better and I'm, i get happier and I, you know it's it's there's great therapy in this i think and that's part of why i do it um i have to I have to have something to occupy me yeah and i love that you're doing it for yourself yeah you know i have to sell that you know they do they, 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 they do come in and then i sell at the end sure. to I sell it at the three because you, you know just run out of space and money Yes, yes. Well, you we all know you guys are making a ton of money, so it's not about the money. You guys are swimming in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wish. Yeah, no, I think that's the limit. I, when we, I did post something ages ago about lots of people sort of put, you know, built, not bought as a, as a hashtag. And I kind of thought to build a bike costs a fortune. You know, really, you know, and it's daft. You're basically chucking money at it. And if you take your, your time into that as well. So it's not a... It's not a it's not a cheap process, and anyone who's building bike is is making sacrifices in their life elsewhere to do it. You know, I think in that cut corners at some point. Yeah. Um, and luckily, touch wood, my my day job. That's why I can't take my eye off the ball with that. Is is right. is good. And we've managed to survive this COVID thing so far, touch wood. So yep. you know, I've got to I've got to love and really sort of deliver there. Otherwise, the fun stops. Yeah, you got to take care of that stuff first, then the fun stuff follows. Yeah, exactly. All right, so if any of our listeners, so we're taking a couple things away today. If you see Ziggy Moto at a show, say, hi, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I know. It's kind of, yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's I'll funny. be the good guy with his with his head down and his hood up. <laughs> that's right. But that's a good way to do it. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that, you know, people they see on Instagram that they see as these huge, you know, the, uh, personalities and, and 
when yeah. they when these guys go to shows, they're there to see everybody else's stuff. They're, I think the the yeah. more popular people get, the less they want people to come up and you know stroke them for anything. They just want to be there and hang out and make friends. Yeah, exactly. Just be just yeah, absolutely. You know, Normal and, and, and keep your head down and have nice, meaningful conversations with nice, meaningful people. You know, that's what right. I found actually. The community, the bike communities, is full of that. You know, mm-hmm. haven't met haven't met us haven't met a bad apple if you like if that's a um and amongst all of the people i've ever met from track stuff to the show stuff so it's always great oh, and i agree 100 percent. so hopefully it stays that way we'll yeah sure we're gonna have a it'd be an interesting couple of years here ahead of us that hopefully um i'm gonna get to meet you out there hopefully uh i'm gonna do my world tour you know <laughs> oh cool amazing yeah fantastic <laughs> As soon as they let me come, I'm I'm coming somewhere. I don't know. I'm I got to get out of here. Amazing. I mean, I think I got you know the bike show is the one to aim for. So now I've got a couple of builds that are just it's nice in a way. It's bought me some more time. So the CB and the <laughs> DX hopefully will be in better shape by by May next year. I think it's May next year. But. Wow. And time will fly. This is going to be yeah, a, okay. the world's so crazy right now. By the time we blink, it'll be hopefully just better days and, and more open to do everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we're living in a shit show over here right now. I don't know what we're waking it, up to every day. Really? Is it kind of, you know, we're, we're they're loosening lockdown for us, but they're worried about a second spike, but it's starting. Yeah, no, just the, um, with all the protests and, you know. Oh, that's right. and, yeah, of course. I mean, it we, is We didn't hear about COVID I mean, for like two weeks. <laughs> really? I mean, it's you know, in a way, the media spin the COVID thing up, so it's good that there's a distraction from COVID. But yeah, no, I know that it is. Um, it's insane. Uh, what's yeah. the world sort of? It feels like um, you know, Armageddon. <laughs> sort of it does. Someone keeps the, those posts where aliens say, "Right, we're on next." <laughs> right. Exactly. It's true though. It's yeah, like, it feels I just... like it. If there's, I, I, I wake up in the morning, so I have a three-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 15-year-old. And, well, I keep okay. think, and I keep thinking, like, you know, we remember stuff from growing up. Um, but what are these kids, like, this is a intricate part of world history that this is, yeah. I'll be interested to see what they take out of this. Like, I lived through that. Yeah. It's amazing. And actually, the, the sort of, the, absolutely, and it resonates with a three-year-old. Luckily, he's probably going to be blissfully unaware. But the, uh, yeah. Good ones are gonna. This will be resonating with them absolutely. Yeah, you, know. you missed the first year of high school baseball because of a virus. Yeah, who does okay. even thought it up? Yeah, no one. No one would have thought of it. But we just keep on trucking, move forward, yeah. and see what yeah. happens. And lose ourselves in the old project. I, Amen. I did lose. I think I lost my mojo a little bit when it all kicked off, and I couldn't. I would bothered, but right. it's coming back now, and I'm getting back into it. And it's good. It's a good distraction. And crazy. You know what? It's actually a great time to be creative. A yeah, great absolutely. time to learn stuff and, and do give those... yourself tasks. Like yes. driving for fifteen hours across <laughs> through the night. Exactly. Just stay awake. Don't don't you know. Yeah. I'm gonna learn Photoshop. I'm gonna learn, you know, all these other things, you know, that that'll be the good things to do. Amazing. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Paul, thank you so much, man. It was a, a pleasure to meet you too. Like we're we're talking on Zoom right now. If anybody and I think we're going to put these on um, YouTube when I get around to it. So cool. um, that then you'll know what Paul looks like. Ah, go away there. I've got there's a filter on Zoom that says you know touch up my appearance. I can I've... I can blur your face out for the entire thing. If you want. <laughs> there is a filter that says touch up my appearance in Zoom, and I and someone That's said right. to me the other day they said you look awful. I said, wait there, I'll turn the filter on. Oh, hang on. It is on. It is on. It just gives me long blonde hair and like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eyeshadow and big lips. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. thanks. And hey, anybody that wants to follow Paul, make sure you go to Ziggy Moto. And what's the, what's the website too? Because the website's oh, pretty Ziggy awesome. Moto, Keto, UK. Yeah, I kind of, you know, it's basically just driving towards my retirement or at some point I'll take on a, a paid build um, and T-shirts. Because yeah. for every T-shirt I sell, I can buy more expensive little lights. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Go buy. Go get some merch today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you, brother. We're gonna sign off here. But everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, Paul, thank you so much. I'm, I'm sorry about the hassle. I get in touch with you with our time difference and everything. That's cool. It's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. 
Yeah, nice to meet you, brother. I will see you soon. Take care. Enjoy that drive. Take, I will. Thank you, bud.